Hi everybody, it's Nikki and um, part four of T-Slim and 670G uh, comparison. Um, I just did calibrations, which kind of deserves its own video. So I cut that one off um, and I'm back to talk about the accuracy. Here's where I get to do my numbers. Um, obviously none of this is uh, medical advice. It's all personal experience personal opinion um, and really this is kind of like my you know what is true for me may or may not be true for another person I'm just sharing what I've seen and what my experience is um, so that's that okay um, when it came to accuracy um, I think a lot of people agree with this there are some people who hate Dexcom so I understand that that's you know that's part of it too um, for me, I feel like Dexcom is the better sensor. I feel like I see far fewer sensor problems, sensor errors, um, or failed sensors, or um, if I'm going to be fair, I am going to say I do see my fair share of drop signals with my Dexcom. Um, that is kind of a regular thing for me. However, the majority of them are without consequence. Um, so as long as the drop signal is not any more any longer than 15 minutes in duration, it can continue to use basal IQ. If once I go past 15 minutes, I do lose basal IQ, and I do lose basal IQ from time to time, um, even to the point where I had two sensors back to back that um, Tandem replaced for me because you know day one or day two I was getting these one to two hour uh, windows where there's there was no signal. Um, even though the sensors continued to read, they didn't, they didn't fail. Um, I would just have these long periods of, of no signal. Um, the majority of my sensors are fine. The majority of my sensors are, I do get, you know, off and on drop signals, most of them under 15 minutes, uh, no harm, no foul. So that's it. With the, um, with the Guardian, Again, the new transmitter has really decreased the amount of drop signals, I mean, of, of failed sensors, um, but there are just still more sensor issues. Um, so, what was I going to say? Uh, accuracy. I'll talk about accuracy for a second. Um, with this one, this is what I do. I really enjoy, I really enjoy looking at the sensors. Um, so, I like to kind of log my numbers and then calculate stuff and try to figure out what it means. Um, so I did this with the G6 and with the Guardian, um, including with the Libre. And my Libre, I gotta say, it's like my little, you know, it's my little fighter. That's the way it feels. Um, but I did this over three days and I did this with what I consider to be a very, very good Guardian sensor. So this was kind of one of my highest performing sensors um, and it's on the new transmitter. Um, so this is as good of a sensor as I'm gonna get with Medtronic. Um, and this was 44 readings over a total of three days. And what I did was for every reading, I'd collect the numbers. As I said, Libre included. There's no reason to talk about the Libre. Um, but I collected the um, Guardian, Dexcom, and the Libre. Um, okay, so I really wanted to look at both general accuracy as well as lag, which is a little bit harder to see, um, although not very hard. But the way I did it is out of the 44 readings in order to just kind of talk about general accuracy, like how reliable are these numbers. Um, what I did was I took the readings from the Guardian and the, and the um, G6 and I saw how many of those were within 20% of my actual BG reading. Um, in order to look at lag, and again using the same 44 values, I found six values that were showing evidence of a falling BG um, and again, compared those to the Guardian and the G6. And then I also found 13 that showed evidence of a rising BG, you know, most likely like a rebound. Um, and I made the same comparison. I also compared to see which ones were within 20% of the, of that value, knowing that that value was a rising number or a falling number rather than a stable number. Um, it was interesting. And as I said, this was a, this is not at all anything different than what I always see with the Guardian. So I'm very comfortable talking about this. Um, I don't feel like this was a fluke or I didn't give it a fair chance. You know, this was this is typical for me, Guardian performance. Um, of the 44, I'll tell you about G6 first. Of the 44 readings, um, 33 of them, or 75%, were within 20% of my actual BG reading. Um, so 75% were within 20%. 
to me, that's, you know, I'd like to see it a little bit better than that, but that's okay. I mean, that's, that's reasonable. And my guess is I, my guess is that the other ones were close enough. Um, or they were part of the ones that were really on a big rebound or something like that. Um, of the 44 readings where six of them showed evidence of a falling BG, um, four out of those six or 67% were within 20%. So basically what I saw there is that on a falling BG, approximately 67% were still within 20% of my BG, kind of looking, kind of showing that the lag with a falling blood sugar is pretty good. Like that's a pretty decent... Um, I'm happy with 67%. All my sensors have lag. That's just, I think, I think most people have lag. I have really bad lag. Um, so for me, that's a decent, uh, outcome or whatever. Okay. Uh, again, of the 44 readings, I, there were 13 that showed evidence of a rising BG. Um, so of those 13 readings, um, eight of them or 62% were within 20% of my actual BG. And I also made note that two of them were one one number outside of it. So they were so basically ten of the thirteen, almost ten of the thirteen were within twenty percent, um, and that is during that's with a rising blood sugar. So that's kind of I'm looking at that lag, how well it's able to hang with my blood sugar as it rises, um, sixty two percent. So pretty happy with all of that. Um, the Guardian, and I'll tell you up front, my Guardian is terrible, absolutely terrible with lag. Um, I do think that the new transmitter has improved lag and accuracy, but this is what I got even with a really good performing sensor on the updated transmitter. Um, first of all, of the 44 readings, I was only able to use 42 of them because at that time the Guardian was requiring a calibration. Um, I'm not trying to pick on the Guardian. I'm saying that that is life with the Guardian. There is no required uh, calibration for the G6, so that wasn't an issue. But two of the 44, it was an issue here, so I couldn't. So I dropped those. Um, um, of the 42 then, again, there were the six that were during a falling BG. Of those six, oh, sorry. And I'm sorry, first I'll do, of the 42 readings... 16 or 38 percent were within 20 percent of my actual BG. So again, looking at kind of just overall reliability or accuracy, 38 percent of my Guardian readings were within 20 percent of my um, actual BG. Of the 42 readings, the six that were a, a falling BG, zero of my Guardian readings were within 20 percent. So that's the lag on a falling blood sugar, which my Guardian is actually even better on a falling one than on a rising one. Um, zero were within, were within 20%. Of the 42 readings for the 13 that were a, a rising BG, um, zero were within 20% of my rising BG. So again, not everybody has that, but that's the lag for me. And that's a terrible case of the lag for me. Um, and that's the way it is with Medtronic. Again, that has to have an effect on auto mode and on my suspends and everything else. So for people who don't struggle with the lag at all, they might have better luck with those things. But um, in my case, I really had a hard time with those. Um, I think I can knock it out. Maybe I can knock it out. Transmitter, this is very, very broad. Um, the Guardian transmitter is good. For, the warranty is good for one year. It must be charged between uses. You must change the battery in the charger, which you have to do probably every couple of months. I think my new charger, it's like, you know, once a month or once every two months. Um, and the new transmitter, if you don't have the new transmitter or, if, you know, the, the version 2.2 really is the only one to mess with. Um, the other one has got serious problems. Um, the new transmitter is better, reduced lag time, better overall accuracy. But as I've just shown for me, um, there's still some issues. And new transmitter has dropped the BG required loop, but there's all that time in safe basal. Um, so that's the transmitter. Um, I've had a couple of them replaced. They've been good about replacing them. Uh, the G6, it's a three month transmitter. This actually is not my favorite. So I like the I like the one year warranty. I like that setup. I like that arrangement better. Um, for the G6, it's a three-month transmitter. It's actually good for 112 days. I'm not good with these details, but I'll tell you what I think I know. Um, you cannot start a new sensor within 10 days of expiration. So if you're within 102 days, 
if you're within the last 10 days of your transmitter, you cannot start a new sensor. So potentially you could be losing 20 days every two transmitters. Um, you, there's a way to avoid it, get organized, save the date, either extend or start a new sensor. Um, and I have heard, but I have no experience with it, that using Spike, you can actually re, uh, you can restart the transmitter, which resets the counter, and you can kind of do the whole thing again. However, they have a short shelf life. Um, they're only, the, the expiration is only good for, the expiration date is six months. Um, so if no matter how organized you are, you still have to swap out so that you're not throwing away good ones or new ones. Um, uh, I talked talk, talk about drop signals, um, replacements. Both companies so far have been really good about replacing sensors and I can't complain about either company. Um, I can say that I spent more time on the phone with Medtronic and they used to have kind of a more involved, um, troubleshooting thing. Um, Tandem has been very short. I don't know what's going on with Dexcom. I hear mixed things about that right now. Um, but most of what I'm doing, I can do through Tandem anyway. And those have been short, quick and painless phone calls, but both companies, all three companies, I guess, have been really good about replacing things. Um, battery and charging. I think I can get this all done. Battery and charging. Um, you have to change the battery use the 670G uses a double A battery. You have to change it. Um, I think probably every eight to 10 days, maybe is average. Some people can go longer by, um, using different lithium batteries or rechargeable batteries, um, or by changing their settings. So they're not draining the batteries quickly. Um, the T sum needs to be charged. This was a hard adjustment for me to make. And in this case, again, I just prefer the battery with the 670G, um, it, you need to charge your T-Slim, and I've had it die on me, and I had to change the cartridge that was in there as a result, um, so I was unhappy with that, um, but I have since learned how just to charge my pump, and I have, you know, I have a portable charger I carry, um, I have the cable, I can hook it into the car, I can hook it into a wall, I mean, there's plenty of op opportunity to do it, I just have to be organized, and I'm doing, I'm doing that, so, um, that's that. Insulin waste, I'll finish on this one. 670G wins on this one. You can drain the reservoir all the way down to nothing. Um, I think the only thing sometimes is there might be 10 units left in the tube. Um, the T-Slim, you cannot empty the cartridge. And I think it might be 20 or so units in the end of every cartridge that you can't get to to use. I've heard of people rotating so that they are alternating I mean, I guess they're using that insulin somehow in their next cartridge and then the next one they're dumping um, just to make sure they're not using old insulin. I haven't had a reason to do it yet, so I don't know much. I just know that it's a shame to be wasting insulin and I'm currently pulling out that insulin and depositing it, depositing it into a 670G experiment vial so I'm not wasting it yet. But the day that I have to throw it away, I will be a little bit bummed. But that's that and I'm out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.